Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is Tuesday, May the 4th. And just because I teed it up yesterday, may the 4th be with you. Uh, all right, that's super silly, but I wanted to go ahead and take a look today at Matic Network, uh, which is Polygon. Uh, this is the Polygon project uh, that those of you in uh, crypto will be familiar with. Um, they've had some updates here lately in connectivity with Aave. And I wanted to take a look at uh, what's been going on with uh, with this uh, network token. We're looking at it uh, versus the dollar. Looks like we've got data going all the way back to, this would have been uh, May of 19. So as you take a look here, uh, you can see how relatively you know, stable pricing was. And then 2021 happened, uh, like it's happened to many, many projects this year. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Um, moving averages, certainly on the day level, are going to be uh, very much bullish. Um, but we'll, when we get down to the lower levels, the uh, lower time frames, we'll see how it all plays out. So let's dive in, get this thing going. We're going to do the usual, we'll do a 10, 20, and a 60. I like my 10 to be green because that is my short-term uh, buy signal. I like to buy based on movement in smaller or shorter time frames. Then I'm going to put in my uh, red, my sell signal at the 20. And then my yellow here is just going to be the 60, uh, 60 day. And that's just to give me a good idea of where markets have been and where they are right now. So... As you can tell, you know, these uh, couple of days uh, of significant movement um, really moved, uh, made it where this on the daily is significantly, significantly bullish. But I think when we take it down to the one hour, you're going to see a more bearish situation. And sure enough, you do. You've got the 10 day uh, lower than the 20, which is lower than the 60. That is a bearish trend. Uh, that appears to have started, uh, we'll call it yesterday. Well, it started back here, but as far as the uh, signals go for this for this uh, moving average, um, I like to see all three averages in line, and that really kicked in yesterday, <clears throat> uh, really late last night. Let's take it down to 30 minute. 30 minute as well. Uh, definitely bearish, although you you get a little bit of upward movement, so that's pulling the 10 period up towards the 20, but all three moving averages right now are still in line, uh, pointing to a bearish move. And at the 15 minute, um, this pullback was enough to go ahead, ahead and have the uh, 10 day cross above, I'm sorry, the 10 period cross above the 20. And now um, it's sort of, they've converged. And in fact, the 10 is approaching the 20 again but these are out of order, so I would definitely wait to see uh, what's going to happen, um, whether it's going to uh, pull both higher or if the 10 is going to fall back below uh, and, and signal a, uh, another, another one of the uh, lower movements in a bullish market. So I'm sorry, a bearish market. And that's sort of what happened um, back here uh, earlier, actually, uh, earlier today. You had a situation where the 10, uh, the 10 period, even uh, touched the 60 before pulling back lower. It sort of oscillated around. And then uh, this mo this morning had a significant move lower, right? Uh, so at the lower time frames, any individual prices are far more sensitive. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, the one day or if we were to take it to the one month, um, they are going to be even, even less sensitive to price movement. So... That's one of the reasons why I like to trade using uh, the more sensitive, um, the more sensitive periods. Trade using uh, the tighter or shorter term uh, uh, entry points, and then exit using a longer term position, so that I can manage the position according to the longer term trend, not just the sort of individual fluctuations, if you will, of uh, the market. Let's kick this back to the daily. And we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to go actually to the MACD, get a better sense of, of uh, if we're seeing anything. Of course, it's going to be fully bullish. Uh, I mean, this coin has been bullish, uh, sorry, this token has been bullish for a few months now, a couple months now. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that with the daily chart, it's just oscillating in positive territory. 
Uh, but let's take it to a lower time frame just to get a better sense. So we had a crossover on the hourly uh, just yesterday, yesterday morning, and it did go below the zero line. So it, both uh, of these went negative. That would have been a great sell. Let's go ahead and take a look as well at the 30 minute. 30 minute uh, actually had a little bit of a crossover pulling back bullish. But again, um, I don't trust these crossovers until um, until I want to see a cross like you had uh, yesterday, and I want to see movement uh, below uh, or or I want I want both the MACD line, which is blue, and the signal line, which is red, to cross the signal line. Uh, so if it started off positive, I want to see it go negative, and vice versa. So uh, all of these other little sort of oscillations and crosses to me don't matter as much um, and it'll take at this point a pretty strong up up move to pull this MACD line back into positive let's take a look at the 15 minute so this is the perfect reason why you had a crossover um, I'll have to pull this back this crossover that happened uh, yesterday on Monday May the 3rd uh, and then went negative uh, markets have been going lower since then right um, if you look we were roughly at 82 cents since then, and now we're se uh, 71 cents. So that's 11 cents off. Uh, it's fairly significant, you know, closer to 15% um, near it. So, uh, you know, these oscillations here uh, for buys are really less significant. And even this one, which uh, happened earlier today, this is a significant bullish cross. And yet you see that both lines didn't go uh, positive. They didn't cross the, Z the signal line. They pulled on back. That's what makes the MACD line so hard to use as an individual um, trading indicator. Uh, but I do like confirming moves with it. I just don't typically start moves using that one. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do, just because we have a, uh, you know, we have a, a low and a high, Let's just see what a full retracement might look like in this scenario. Um, I'm going to start here, take it over there. So I'm um, using, you know, sort of the low in February, uh, I'm sorry, in January, and the high that occurred towards the end of September. We have a scenario where uh, current price is just shy of the 38.2% retracement. Um, actually, it's, yeah, 38.2 is 64, almost 65 cents. So we're about six cents uh, higher than that, just shy of 10%. Um, it would not surprise me if prices did fall to that level. I think a 38.2% retracement is fairly common. Um, and then we'll just have to see. Sometimes you'll get the full 50%. Hard to say if that's going to happen in this scenario, especially since the upward move was so strong. Um but uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on. And also, it's nice to know, you know, I always want to see if some of these other levels just happen to play well as support or resistance in the past. So this 41 cents uh, could be an interesting level as well. I'm not saying we're going to fall 30 cents to get there, um, but I would not be surprised if we fall another, you know, six, uh, six or seven cents. To touch this 38.2 percent retracement and then just see if, it, if we're going to go higher or not but um that is uh that's just one way of looking at this market for sure uh you've got all sorts of things you could do um as far as drawing you know you can always draw always something to draw to make it pretty um but you just it ultimately it's just going to be a matter of you know, do these markets, um, are you seeing what you need to see in order to make a, uh, you know, a positive trade? And um, right now I'm not, I'd probably wait. For me personally, I'm going to look to wait on this one, on Matic. Um, I do like the fact that it's still trading below uh, $1. Um, I think many of these networks, especially given some of the news that they have recently, could pop uh, above a dollar, could pop again. But um, I'm going to wait and see if we do start to get some more strength in this market. I will most likely look to buy it. Um, but that's it. Do you, do you guys trade, uh, Matic? I'm curious how many of you, 
uh, are active uh, in Polygon or, or even if you've used Polygon. Hey, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you once again for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be working on some more types of content, possibly some live trading here soon. Uh, I do trade options and I also trade uh, in addition to cryptocurrency. I also trade uh, some futures uh, and a little bit of currency. So I've been thinking about recording some of that. So let me know if that's something you guys would enjoy watching. And uh, hey, I hope you have a great week. Happy trading. And uh, in Texas, where I'm based, today is Tuesday. So it's time for some tacos for Taco Tuesday. All right. Happy trading. Take care.